Rochester in white, Case in navy. And off we go. Third quarter action from DeSanto Field. Diaz up around the 25-yard line. And he'll go to work with the rest of his offense first and 10. Again, this Rochester team, 2-7 and seven last year. And while their roster has been depleted a little bit, I have to admit I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the way they've played so far. They definitely came out strong, and perhaps the team has faded just a little bit uh, in the second quarter. But Rochester's still hanging around in what is the first matchup between these two teams since 2011, which is kind of odd given how often they see each other in other sports. Gallagher throws a screen pass to Diaz near side, and the first and 10 play picks up five yards up to the 31. So Dan Diaz with his second catch of the game. His other one came on a nice long 30-yard completion down the left sideline in the first quarter. Second down and well, I guess they're going to call it four yards. It looked more like five at first. That was tipped and almost intercepted. Great job defensively by Nick Kadelic. Actually, I beg your pardon. Last name is pronounced Kedlesic. I apologize for that. Kedlesic, who's playing at the uh, nickel spot at the moment, almost came up with the interception. So now it's third down and six after the loss of two. Shinneman wide left. Gallagher zips it over the middle. A great find. Connor Byrne, who had the touchdown for Rochester, picks up the first down. Right on the money. Those are the kinds of throws Gallagher has made so far today that make you feel like, you know what, this Rochester offense does have something to hang their head on. On first and 10, Sean Mannion right over the right guard. Picked up maybe two yards. It'll set up second down and eight as the Case defensive line made a nice stop. Nose guard Ian Henderson, a senior from Detroit, Michigan, along with Tyler Bushman and Cam Brown, really good defensive linemen. Second and eight, great defensive play. Patrick Crossy dove in there and deflected it away from Dan Diaz. Third and eight. Rochester trying not to stall on their opening drive here of the second half. They have only converted on three of seven third downs so far. Gallagher going deep down the right side. A flag coming in, even though the ball was overthrown, looking for Shinneman. Well, I'll let you be the judge whether or not Mangwende committed pass interference, but that appears to be the call. Money Mangwende with his first penalty of the night. Twelve fifty-five left in the third quarter. Case twenty-eight. Rochester ten. On first and ten. Mannion met in a hurry. Great job by Brent Carney. Brent Carney, a sophomore from Penn Trafford High School. He and Cam Brown were both there. Andrew Lease getting some time on the defensive line. There's Tyler Bushman. And a look there at Carney, the outside linebacker, who wears number six. Made the stop. Second and nine. Gallagher dumps it off to his tight end, Justin Dahl. But for 
whatever reason, wasn't able to pull it in. Third down for the Jackets. Nice crowd here on hand tonight on what has just been a very comfortable evening in Greater Cleveland. Gallagher ran right into the sack. Carney was there and he ripped his helmet off as he tackled him. No malicious intent. Just trying to pull him to the turf, which he most certainly did. Nice play. And it sets up a fourth down. So Case forces the punt. And instead of Fan, this time looks like junior wide receiver Mario Robina is back deep. And he won't get a chance to return this. Kicked off. Uh, to the right-hand side of the field and out of bounds. 11-31 left in the third quarter. Case with a 28-10 lead. Folks, if you're here tonight and you're watching the game, stop by the Jolly Scholar for 10% off after the game. Get Jolly. 11-31 left in the third quarter. As much as Case has dominated this game offensively and dominated the time of possession, their drives haven't taken that long when they've gone up the field to score. Essentially, they've all just been four-minute drives along the way. Saxton to the air. Justin Fan makes the catch and runs up toward the 30. I think he's just shy. Nope, they're going to wave him for a first down. Saxton goes back to Fan on the far side, and he got leveled. Wrapped up down low by Caden Cole. And then a nice tackle up top. Noah Barnard there. Second down and six for Case. 11 minutes left in the third. Saxton rolls to his right. Nice pass and catch. Giuseppe Orsini out of bounds for a first down. Saxton's done a really nice job throwing accurately on the run tonight. A couple guys on the sideline watching their teammates go to work. 28-10 lead. Case trying to add on to it. First and 10 from their own 44. Saxton turns and hands it off. Sam Jenkins not able to go forward too far. Tim Mascari wrapped him up pretty quickly. Number 57 on the defensive line. Gain of two sets up second down and eight. From their own 46, as Justin Fan comes back in. Fan on the near side, hit right as he caught the football. That's Justin Fan's 12th catch of the game, which he again had in the final game of the season last year against Mount Union. He set the school record. Remember I, I mentioned he had 15 catches in a game. He did that twice last year. And Jason Salura in 02 and in 03 also has 15 catches in a game twice. Perhaps Fan might be looking at a school record night. Gallagher zips it over the middle, almost pulled down in the aftermath of the effort. Adam Zibko just couldn't quite pull it in. And on the third and ten pass, it brings up fourth down. 
That's great effort. Zipko's helmet started to pop off. His chin strap rode up his nose. Maybe that distracted him a bit. So again, that is not Drew Saxton punting. It's Chase Witte for Case Western. Dan Diaz, fair catch. And at the 25-yard line, Rochester takes over. First and 10. 8.52 left in the third. And Case with a convincing lead. All right, so here comes the Yellow Jacket offense. First down and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Gallagher throws across his body on the run. It was an accurate throw to Steven Glinsky, but through his hands, and he couldn't hang on. Just a terrific evening to open the 2018 season. Certainly hope you're having fun. We're in, certainly enjoying the game tonight. Case is playing really well. Second and 10 for Gallagher. Tucks it and runs right through the middle of the field. Got a first down. Nice effort, Matt Gallagher. Meanwhile, the only other game involving a PAC team, the Golden Tornadoes from Geneva, are trailing 28 to 10, the exact same score against the Marietta Pioneers down in Southeast Ohio. Gallagher on the run again. He's up to about the 39 yard line. So it's actually gonna put him back at the 38. So it's just a two yard gain, second and eight. 8.05 left in the third quarter. Five receiver look for Gallagher here. Gallagher near side, nice catch. Connor Byrne, who has easily had the best game as a receiver tonight. Pulled that one in and picked up the first down. It's the eighth first down of the night for Rochester. And Byrne now has four catches for almost 50 yards tonight. Gallagher hands this one off. And it looks like they'll get close to midfield. A little hesitation from Sean Mannion. Second and seven. Gallagher low throw. And he threw it when Daniel DiLoretto was kind of looking, but not entirely. Beg your pardon, the uh, stats that I were looking at have just updated. Connor Byrne already has five catches for 62 yards. So he has easily eclipsed that 50-yard mark, five for 62 tonight. Third down and seven. Gallagher throws, first down yardage. DiLoretto got rocked. Huge hit by Patrick Crossy. And it brings up fourth down. Patrick Crossy, a captain on this defense and one of the top defensive backs in the conference and he proves it with a big play in a big spot there well done 652 left in the third and Rochester has to punt Josh Brown back to send it deep down the field it's a low kick in case 
going to have tough field position here. They'll get it all the way up at the five-yard line. Robino at least able to hold on to the football. His forward progress should take him maybe up to the six. We'll see. Well, I'm sure Rochester's probably enjoying playing under the lights their first night game since September 15th, 2012. But I'm not sure they're enjoying what they're seeing on the scoreboard at the moment. Sexton hands it off, and Jenkins perhaps gets half a yard. Not much going on there. Sets up second down and nine officially up at the seven-yard line. Fan checks back in. So does Giuseppe Orsini. As Jenkins remains the running back here. Saxton under duress quickly throws to Fan for his 13th catch of the night. And he's got it. Up at the 15-yard line. Good gain, but not quite enough for a first down as Justin Fan continues to close in on his own school record for receptions in a game. There is Justin Fan, a senior from Atlanta. Now he's delivering a great block. Springs Jenkins for the first down. Justin Fan, he's not a big guy. 5'8", 155, and watch him here. Number one, deliver a nice, timely hit. And he takes the uh, linebacker out of the play. That was Davis Friedman. But there is a flag down on the field. It was third and one, but we'll see what happens here. It was a holding call. So that's going to back Case up halfway to their own goal line. It is now third down and 11. Ball is on the five. Saxton through the air. Jenkins thinks he's got a little bit of room. He is really close to the first down. It'll depend on the spot. A great execution. On third and long. And they're going to call for a timeout to measure it with 4.50 left in the third quarter. This is a huge moment in the game for Rochester. Because on top of the fact that they're playing against Case, it feels like they're playing against the clock right now. You're down by 18 points. It's a three-possession game. you got to get the ball back. And if Case keeps this drive going, they could, at a minimum, just continue to tick off some valuable time. Spartans are just a little short. Several chain links short. And it looks like they're going to bring out the punting unit. So Chase Whitty will line up almost in his own end zone. And Dan Diaz stands near midfield. Still breezy, but... Not nearly as much as it was at the beginning of the game, but for whatever it's worth, the wind is at Case's back here. If perhaps that helps Witty hit a better punt. Kind of a low line drive punt. Diaz fields it barely on his half of the field. 
And he is wrestled to the turf quickly. Adam Poltrak, the junior from Mountain View, California, comes up with the stop. Case 28, Rochester 10 with 437 left in the third quarter. All right, Matt Gallagher back to work. Gallagher hands the football off to Yargo. First carry of the second half for him. The play was blown dead, but Yargo never went down. And so Cameron Brown was just going to continue, uh, continue going. He thought that maybe the play would still continue. It had been blown dead, and Yargo was looking around saying, what the heck? Well, again, no malicious intent there. Justin Fan right now, the uh, standout player on either side, 13 catches for 104 yards as Gallagher's pass sails incomplete. Connor Byrne and Daniel DiLoretto each have 62 receiving yards. DiLoretto had 34 of those on one play. when he went flying down the middle of the field but was tackled inside the 10-yard line. Diaz, two catches for 36 yards. Mannion, the leading rusher, his longest carry of the night is five yards. That's how impressive Case's defensive line has been. Third down and 10. Gallagher with four options over the middle. It's a great throw. Diaz had it for a minute, and then it was knocked away. Michael Amadio on the coverage. Beautiful form tackle, and Diaz could not complete the catch. Good thrown ball from Matt Gallagher. But it is fourth down and 10 for Rochester. And all of a sudden, both these offenses have stalled a little bit since halftime. Neither team has scored in this third quarter. Punting down the field from just inside the 20. That was, <laughs> that was a little dangerous. But Mario Robina hanging on. And so Case takes over, first down and 10 from their own 25-yard line. 3.38 left in the third quarter. If you join me a little late tonight, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for tuning in. Andrew Luftglass, the play-by-play uh, -play voice of the Spartans, will join you for the rest of the football games here in 2018. Happy to jump on board here for him for, uh, for one night. Saxton tucks it and runs. He's done that a lot tonight. It's his fourth carry. Lots of times he has just run out of the pocket and then thrown the ball. But Saxton has almost 40 rushing yards here. Second and three from the 32. Not much going on there. That was sophomore Zach Hall carrying, and it was his uh, third carry of the night. But he's got a total of three rushing yards now. Two thirty-five and counting. Stretch handoff, they need the 35. Hall's got it and more. First down, Spartans, and Zach Hall was one tackle away from breaking a big one. Spartans want to hurry up here. It's a screen pass to Orsini. 
Flag comes in behind Orsini. It looks like they're going to get Luke DeFrancesco for an illegal block in the back here. Well, they're actually going to call it a hold instead of a block in the back. But either way, an illegal block, and it is a 10-yard penalty. But it's 10 yards from the spot of the foul, not 10 yards from the original line of scrimmage. So it's, it's actually first down and 13. Drew Saxton spreading everything out, feeling some pressure up the middle. Gets rid of it quickly. There's Justin Fan on his 14th catch of the night. The next reception for Fan ties his own school record. At least for a moment, Fan comes out of the game. Case has shown a real willingness to throw the football tonight although they are a pretty solid run team as well. Saxton hands it off. Hall, left-hand side, bobbling it around. And he might have picked up the first down. It's close. Justin Fan back out on the field. Everybody's keeping their eye on number one for uh, Case Western Reserve. He's lined up in the slot, closest to the right tackle there on the right-hand side. Third down and in inches. Now fan flip-flops with Luke DeFrancesco. Same play, great blocking scheme, and Hall has well more than he needs. And I'll tell you what, the wide receivers, for as well as they've played tonight catching the ball, the wide receiving core as a group has blocked exceptionally well. Screen pass near side to Orsini. He's tackled right around the 37, 36 yard line. Colton Morgan checks back on. Fan and DeFrancesco go to the far side of the field. They're over there with Joey Spitali. 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Case doesn't have to run a play if they don't want to, but instead, haul right through the middle, and they're down to the 30-yard line. What an impressive third quarter for Case. Their defense continued to play well. The offense has moved the ball, even though they haven't scored. They have milked the clock well. They've protected the 28-10 lead, and the Spartans are just 15 minutes away from winning the first game of the season. Final quarter when we come back to DeSanto Field after this timeout. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216 7074 4300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. Flag rippling in the breeze. A significant lead for Case Western Reserve here on opening night. Brendan Gulick with you from DeSanto Field under the lights tonight. The next catch for Justin Fan will tie the school record for receptions in a game. Let's see if he can do it tonight. First play is a handoff. Nice, solid form tackle defensively. Jordan Cavanis, the junior, was able to hold up Zach Hall. Hall up to eight carries now for a total of 20, uh, 28 yards. It was about a three-yard pickup. Second and seven. Get a good look at him there. Fan. 
Fan in the slot on the right. 14 catches for 116 yards. Saxton looking Fan's way, and he just overshoots him. All four of Case's touchdowns tonight are on the ground, which is kind of interesting considering the passing accolades that Saxton racked up as a prep player. But he is throwing the football nicely tonight, 21 of 31, 204 yards, an interception on a play that was tipped. No touchdown passes for him yet. Third down and seven from the 28. Saxton goes back to the air. He's got an open man. First and goal coming up on a great find over the middle to Colton Morgan. Hand off to Zach Hall, and he is swallowed up at the seven-yard line. And with that, Greg Debelak calls timeout. Fourth quarter presented by Innova. Kess Western calls their first timeout with a 28-10 lead. They want to talk about how they want to go about things here. Early fourth quarter action. We'll be back in just a minute. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread High quality ingredients and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Can the Spartans finish off a drive here early in the fourth quarter? They have marched all the way up the field. This has been a really impressive drive they've put together here, and they've continued to totally dominate time of possession. After calling that timeout, you wonder if perhaps part of it was to run the no huddle here and make sure they have the second and third down play handy. We'll see. Zach Hall is the tailback, the sophomore from New Albany. Saxton looking. Fan sitting underneath. It's a throw right over the middle, and it almost hit the umpire. <laughs> Incomplete. Intended for Luke DeFrancesco. So it's third down and goal from the five. I doubt Justin Fan even realizes that he has 14 receptions tonight. I'm sure he knows he's caught the ball a bunch, but I don't think he's locked in on the exact number of catches. Another timeout on the field, and it's called by Case. All right, so they'll burn their second timeout. In this, uh, in this set of downs, actually. Case had brought in a uh, freshman running back, Donald Day III, from Glen Burnie, Maryland, which is generally in the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. Uh, metro area. This is just the first game of the season. And certainly high hopes again for the Spartans, who went to the playoffs last year. They will return home three weeks from tonight, and they'll play another night game. Teal coming to town. The next home game after that won't be until October 13th, when it's homecoming here at Case, and St. Vincent comes to town. That'll be the game after Case finally gets a chance to play 15th-ranked Washington and Jefferson, a game everybody is looking forward to. Third down and goal. The ball's on the five-yard line. Neither team has scored since halftime. Over the middle, just a little too tall. Incomplete. Looking for Spitali in the back of the end zone. And the Spartans will settle for a field goal try. 
And it looks like one of the Yellow Jackets is injured in the back of the end zone. That's not good. It's Austin Carr, a junior safety from Rochester. And so while he is attended to, we will step aside here. 13.48 left in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans have a 28-10 lead. Back in just a minute here at the Sano Field. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4300 or visit us at HotelsClevelandClinic.com or on Facebook. Well, the good news is Austin Carr was able to get back to his feet, and he's walking off largely under his own power here. Spartans are lining up to kick a field goal, which would put them up by 21 points, and they do. Not a long field goal. In fact, it was just longer than an extra point. But Case freshman kicker Robertson Albrecht puts three points on the board for the Spartans. It's now 31 to 10. But in terms of some overall offensive numbers uh, for Rochester at halftime, let's see, I want to make sure I give you the right numbers here. At halftime, Rochester had a total of 183 yards of offense. They're at 222 right now. So they essentially had 40 yards of offense in that third quarter. That's pretty impressive from Case's defense. So the Spartans will go back to work. Diaz, the deep return man here. From his own three. A little bit of room up the middle, but he couldn't shake off Travis Johnston. And the rest of the special teams unit for the men in Navy caught up. And that was that for Dan Diaz. Well, after a 2-7 season last year, Rochester really came out and looked good. And you started to wonder if maybe they had turned a corner offensively in the offseason. But as this game has worn on, after scoring on their very first offensive drive, Rochester has been largely neutralized. And a lot of it has to do with the way Case's defensive line is starting to control the line of scrimmage pretty consistently. Thirteen minutes and counting. Thirty-one to ten, Case Western Reserve. Gallagher from the gun throws a screen pass to Diaz, and he got crunched. It's picked up. Case runs it into the end zone. They're calling it a touchdown. Wow, I think the Spartans got a really lucky break. I don't know how you could possibly call that a completed pass. Well, the officials are meeting on the goal line here. For the moment, it's a touchdown for Skylar Wattis. But I would not be surprised if they wiped this off the board. Yep, incomplete pass. Again, you get another look at it here. This, I mean, that's the right call. There's Diaz came down and immediately a perfect tackle from Isaac Withrow. Diaz never had full possession of that, so certainly the right decision. And, and good on the officials for getting together and making the right call. 
It is still 31 to 10, and it's now third down and 11 for Rochester offensively. And it looks like one of the Yellow Jackets may have jumped. Well, they've whistled that on the right guard, Aaron Samad. Sophomore from Rome, New York. Inside 13 minutes left in this fourth quarter. And Rochester hasn't scored in a long time. Their field goal came late in the second quarter. Screen pass to the outside. It's the only way they've been able to get open lately. Noah Shineman picks up decent yardage, but still well shy of the first down. And the Yellow Jackets are going to punt it away. Yeah, Rochester took the, uh, took the first drive that they had offensively after neutralizing Case. They went nine plays, 81 yards in just under four minutes and scored on a Connor Byrne 24-yard touchdown pass. But since then, the Spartans have thoroughly dominated this game. Robina from his own 39. Ducks out of bounds at the 46. So the punt went uh, 41 yards and a return of seven. All right, an update on, uh, on some of the stats throughout the game. Drew Saxton, true freshman quarterback, 23 of 35 for 234 and an interception. Ryan Coolidge, who is in there right now at quarterback, 5 of 6 for 42 yards. And for what it's worth, Justin Fan is not on the field at the moment. Fan has 14 catches for 116 yards. Sam Jenkins, the tailback. Coolidge throws. It's a completion. Well done with Adam Zipko on the receiving end. And it's a case first down. First and 10 from the 42 with 11.48 left in the game. This time a handoff. Jenkins through the left side. He scoots down to the 36. Very well done. Case's offensive line continues to get a really nice push. And the way they are run blocking as a team, really impressive to me tonight. This Spartan group is enjoying some real success of late. And even though they graduated a boatload of the players from last year's playoff team, Spartans have picked up right where they left off tonight. Third and one upcoming after a short game. And now the fullback, Donald Day the third, comes in. Typically, when he's come in, they've run behind him. You can see him there. Jenkins running behind Day. He's got the first down. Sam Jenkins, double-digit carries tonight. He's doing a terrific job. And the Spartans keep the chains moving. 10.30 left in regulation. Justin Fan still on the sideline. Zipped it over the middle, and it's right on the numbers. Beautiful catch by Mario Robina. And Case has it, first and goal. Meanwhile, Day comes back in as the fullback here.
Good effort from Robina there. All four of Case's touchdowns have come on the ground tonight. Coolidge looking around, looking for the end zone. Got it. Touchdown, Colton Morgan. And that is the exclamation point. 37 to 10. The outcome of the game really hasn't been in doubt for quite some time here. But that might be the score that puts it away. Albrecht. Buries the extra point. He's hit all four of those and a short field goal tonight. Check that, all five of those uh, and a short field goal tonight. 9.35 left in the fourth and the Spartans are cruising to an opening night victory. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Beautiful night at DeSanto Field. And the Spartans have opened 2018 with a bang. 38 to 10 over the Rochester Yellow Jackets. Brendan Gulick with you on the opening game of the season. Andrew Luffglass will be back in a couple of weeks when the team returns home to take on Teal. It'll be the third game of the year, second home game, but it's three weeks from now after the Spartans have a bye. Diaz tackled right around the 25. And it'll be first down for Rochester. Again, they have hardly moved the football at all in this uh, second half. Perhaps they can get something going here. You can see 9.30 left in uh, the fourth quarter. And for a Rochester team that's operating under a first-year head coach, and Chad Martinovich, not a first-time head coach, but a first-year head coach at Rochester. And they certainly got off to a good start tonight, but things have not gone their way since then. There is Sean Mannion running the ball over the middle of the line of scrimmage. Short game, picks up two. Second down and seven upcoming. Ninth carry of the night for Mannion. He has a total of 24 yards. How about 51 plays for 234 yards for Rochester? It's an average of 4.6 yards per play, which isn't bad, but the vast majority of that came in the first half. On the other side, Case has 492 yards, and they've run 80 offensive plays tonight. Rochester, four of 12 on third downs. They've got a third and three here, and they're not going to pick it up. Gallagher right to the turf. Spartans fell on top of him, and it's another three and out. Tyler Bushman, the senior from Naperville, Illinois, in the greater Chicagoland suburb. He picks up the sack. An impressive night statistically for the Spartans. Saxton, 234 through the air on 23 of 35. Ryan Coolidge, 8 of 9 throwing the football for 81 yards and a touchdown. That one was bobbled by Robina. And he picked it back up and then was ripped down to the artificial surface. So with 740 left in regulation, I imagine Case is going to try to run as much of this time off as possible. Also been pretty impressed with both teams' uh, discipline tonight. 
We've only seen a total of nine penalties in the entire game. Case, five penalties for 50 yards. Rochester, four penalties for 30 yards. But this has been uh, kind of a lopsided statistical game. And it's kind of mirrored what's on the scoreboard, a four touchdown difference. Ryan Coolidge back out there at quarterback. He's going to tuck it and run. He's darn good at it. And he's over the 30, down to the 31-yard line, a gain of eight. Give Coolidge 50 yards rushing on the night. Second and two. Day comes back in. In the meantime, I'm looking for Justin Fan down on the sideline, and I admit I don't see him. I'm sure he's basically been given the rest of the night off. There's no reason to keep running him back out there, so I don't think. There he is. Yeah, his helmet's off. He's standing with his teammates, but I'm not, uh, I'm not so sure he's going to get a chance to go back out there and try to tie his own school record of 15 catches in a game. But if he ends the night, 14 receptions for 116. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of there. On the first down carry, the clock will continue to wind. 6.45 and counting. Four receiver look. Hall the running back, found a corner, and he's tackled out of bounds. Good solid tackle from Cole McHugh, the freshman linebacker, who doesn't get a ton of playing time in the uh, first group, but he is seeing some playing time here in the second half. He's actually listed as a safety, but sometimes they pull him up toward the line of scrimmage. Admittedly, one roster says he's a linebacker and the other one says strong safety, so who knows for sure. <laughs> Little bubble screen in the near side. Connor Hall, the junior wide receiver on the catch. It's a pickup of six at midfield. And we're at 548. And the clock continues to dwindle. Now, Case certainly respects all of the opponents on their uh, on their schedule. But I'm pretty sure that if you were talking to any of the Spartans, the game this year they are most looking forward to playing is just over a month away. Hall still on his feet and he picks up the first down. After the way the Spartans went undefeated through the pack last year, as did Washington and Jefferson, the fact that those two teams haven't played each other in the regular season just baffles me. It's just the way the schedules have shaken out. But they'll finally get a chance to meet this year, and they're going to do it at W&J on October 6th. And if you are a D3 football fan anywhere across the country, that's a game you want to keep your eye on. One o'clock kickoff, Saturday, October 6th. Under five minutes to go in the game. Coolidge throws a bomb, but he slips, and it's intercepted. Did he come down with it inbounds? I think so. Sure did. Ryan Coolidge very clearly slipped when he threw the ball. Disappointing to throw an interception. I did not see who picked it off for Rochester. Perhaps we can try to get another look at it. We'll see. Mike Becker and our entire production crew have done a great job all night long. Watch Coolidge here. Slipped just a little bit. And a great interception. Just doing the little toe tap. That was Robert Grant, the uh, junior corner. And he was pointing. He knew he picked it off. 444 remaining in the game. It's a nice completed pass to the far side. It's caught by Tyler Tannen for a first down. 
Matt Gallagher still in the game at quarterback. I would imagine he's going to get as many reps as possible. And I think the Rochester Yellow Jackets have taken a timeout here. They're down 38-10 to 10 with 4.33 left in the game. And again, while the outcome of the game not really in jeopardy here, it is a learning opportunity for Rochester. you got to try to take advantage of every chance you get early in the year to try and keep growing and getting better as a team. Case certainly has done that tonight. Hope you'll stick around for our post-game show. It'll be brought to you by Courtyard Marriott University Circle. That's coming up immediately after the game is over. And we will name our Rascal House player of the game as well. There's a couple guys that certainly deserve consideration for that. Justin Fan, Drew Saxton. Sam Jenkins has had a very productive night. Ryan Coolidge, two rushing touchdowns. And he's 9 of 11 through the air. That was a good pass, but thrown out of bounds looking for Tannen. Clock stops at 4.28 left in the game. Matt Gallagher now 17 of 33 for 205 yards. One touchdown. No turnovers for him. Tannen caught it on the little bubble screen. Looked like Joshua Smith's helmet popped off, and so he has to leave the field for a minute. Third down, seven yards to go from the 37. How about that anomaly? Gallagher, too tall, and it's picked off. First interception of the season for Case. It's junior corner Luke Bettle. And the Spartans take over just shy of midfield. I think Gallagher tried to be just a little too perfect there, looking for Steven Glinski, and Bettle was there to make the pick. Been a pretty darn good night for Case Western Reserve, hasn't it? 526 yards of offense. This is their 87th play of the game. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The fact they've run so many plays is just a testament to how hard they work. And the clock winds to three minutes and five seconds. First and ten. And this first down will enable Case to take another couple of minutes off the play clock as long as they keep on going. As a team tonight, they've thrown for more than 320. They've run for more than 200. You're going to check a lot of boxes in terms of team Game-by-game uh, game goals when you do that. Solid run right up the gut. And on the second straight carry for day the third. It's a gain of almost seven yards. We'll call it second down and three. Nice to see, too, that Case has the ability to kind of switch between Drew Saxton and Ryan Coolidge. And both are capable of running the show. That's what Greg Debelak told us. Day on a third straight carry. This is good for a first down. Saxton will be the primary quarterback, it certainly appears. But Coolidge is getting his opportunities as an upperclassman. 
140 and counting. This was a 28 to 10 game at halftime. The only second half touchdown is the only passing touchdown for Case tonight when Coolidge found Colt Morgan. Other than that, an Albrecht 22 yard field goal. And now victory formation for the Spartans. They should have to run one more play and then they can celebrate an opening night win. Just waiting for the clock to get inside of 40 seconds. And as soon as it does, Coolidge will take a knee and that'll be it. All right. Spartans and Yellow Jackets will line up at midfield here as both teams come off. And Case Western Reserve, after an 11-1 season last year, ended with a loss to Mount Union in the second round of the playoffs. They open the 2018 campaign with a decisive 38-10 victory at home in renewing a rivalry with the Rochester Yellow Jackets.